Hello and welcome to another NTN update for today, the 23rd of March, 2021. In this program, we will be briefed by the Royal St. Lucia Police Force, speaking to us about recent COVID-19 breaches, COVID-19 protocol breaches, as well as overall updates on crime and security in St. Lucia. I would like to welcome from the Royal St. Lucia Police Force, uh, Dr. Mashama Seeley, Superintendent of Police, and a top cop, Milton Daisy. The Commissioner of Police. Good afternoon to you both. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. I want to start with you, Dr. Mashama, to just give us Mashama Seeley to speak to us on the COVID-19 breaches uh, for the last few weeks. Thank you. COVID breaches from the 27th December 2020 to 20th March 2021. Business operation breaches total 136. Total arrested 18. Convictions one, warnings 118. Home quarantine breaches, total 17. 15 individuals were escorted to various quarantine sites and two were cleared by the medical team prior to being escorted to a quarantine site. State quarantine breaches, one, the individual was warned and returned to his room. Home party breaches, 12 total arrested five complaints lodged three warnings four minibus travel breaches 162 warnings 162 individual protocol breaches that is persons not wearing a mask total 709 total arrested 97 Complaints were launched against six individuals. Convictions, 30. Fines were between $200 and $800. One person was given 40 hours community service and another one year probation. Warnings, 606. Mass crowd breaches, total 17. Total arrested, one. Warnings 16. Hotel breaches total 11. Number of persons arrested 1. Convictions 1. Warnings 10. Curfew breaches 118. Total arrested 81. Complaints were lodged against 8 persons. 9 were convicted and fined $1,000. Warnings, 29. Total number of persons arrested so far, 201. Number of complaints lodged in total, 17. Total number of convictions, 40. The following are prohibited or rather should not be practiced. Mass crowd events or rather people gathering in large numbers. River and beach limes. And bar owners are reminded to comply with the grab and go protocol. Friday, the 2nd of April to Monday, the 5th of April, kindly be reminded that curfew will be from 7 p.m. to 4 a.m. and businesses are to close by 6 p.m. We are still experiencing individuals remaining at the bars, congregating with friends and drinking, all persons congregating on the beaches and drinking and not maintaining the protocols. This is unprecedented times. This disease does not respect anyone. It is not confined to one person. We are not where we need to be with regards to ourselves being safe. And so we need to ensure that we minimize the spread of COVID by thinking of our friends, our loved ones, our children, our grandchildren, because we do not want to increase or enhance any risk to their safety. And so we encourage persons to continue to follow the protocol. And those who do so, we thank you and appreciate you and encourage you to continue to do so always. And we ask that everyone in an effort to mitigate against COVID-19, 
that we wear our mask properly when leaving our homes, we maintain social distancing, and we sanitize. In that way, you are safe, your family is safe, and we as a community remain safe. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Dr. Seeley, for that update and, of course, the plea to the general public to continue complying uh, to the COVID-19 protocols. I now want to engage uh, you, uh, Mr. Daisy, Commissioner of Police, on the recent trends in the uh, co degree in compliance to uh, the COVID-19 protocols. Uh, can you speak to us? I mean, it, it is at least a travesty that after a, a year of uh, uh, admonitions to the public that we still need to contend with uh, these uh, sorts of uh, non-adherence in the public domain. But can you speak to the trends that we've so far seen, at least from December coming into March? We had the third wave in uh, at the beginning of the year. Tell us what the trends are so far from that time. Yes, um, actually what we are seeing is um, an increase in the um, number of breaches um, committed by individuals and we believe after a year persons would have understood and um, take note of the various protocols and uh, as I have said before the protocols are simple um, it is something that uh, every child remembers it is wearing of your mask sanitizing keeping the distance washing your hands etc I don't think this is too much of asking persons to do and uh, what we realize also is that persons um, in as much as social gatherings are not permitted except through the churches and so on or places of um, worship you find that persons go on the beach in as much as being on the beach is not an offense but they um, being there after they have probably consumed some alcohol they behave in manners that like there's no no covid and um, um urging persons to be aware of that and once this is done if if you are behaving the way you ought to if you are observing the protocols i'll say again there would be no need for any police officer to come to you to ask you to behave or also wear um, your mask so i believe that this is one of the um the things that we see at at all times yes okay uh, breaches in the social sector are arguably one of the most uh, critical, uh, crippling, sorry, um, to the COVID-19 effort overall, response effort. Uh, speak to us about the upcoming Easter weekend. We know that uh, some of the measures will be tightened, including the curfew being reduced. Uh, speak to us about the, uh, the plan of the Royal St. Lucia Police Force for that time period. Yes, actually, I need to remind um, persons that the times, for the curfew time would be reduced so um, from 9 to 7 p.m. and by this at 6 p.m. all businesses all whatever parties that uh, that you are having that is um, approved parties because we know that um, persons are permitted to have 10 family mem members and have a have a session probably could have it could be a birthday or just a, a get together but 10 10 members of the um, family could have a party so but it must it must be over by um, six because curfew starts at seven so any person who has to get to their place um, would get sufficient time between six and seven to get out of um, wherever they are uh, let's speak a little bit about cooperation with law enforcement and also including the wardens. We've seen so far that uh, there have been instances where members of the public have not been uh, cooperating with uh, members of the force, the wardens, uh, in terms of adhering to the uh, COVID-19 protocols. Uh, speak to us about the feeling and the concern coming from your office with respect to uh, the potential danger that your men would be exposed to, not just having uh, coming into violent encounters, but also the risk of uh, COVID-19 exposure. Yes, um, because when persons do not comply, uh, ex say especially for the mask, not wearing the mask, and um, a, a warden or police officer approaches um, this individual, this police officer also puts his life at danger because if you are not wearing a mask and you are not complying after having asked to wear one um, there have been instances where 
the office officers are offering masks to those individuals and they will tell you they do not want it but do we leave that individual alone and it is an offense not to wear the mask so the officer would walk up and trying to effect an arrest so putting the officer's life at risk um, also thanks for that uh, i want to broaden our scope at this point in time uh, to uh, a crime and security overall on island we have so far seen uh, successive uh, homicides in the past week or so. Uh, can you speak to that, uh, the investigation that is ongoing by the Royal St. Lucia Police Force? Yes, um, actually over the um, past weekend we saw, we saw um, four shootings which um, amounted to three homicides. Actually in one of the shootings where um, it was reported that it was a homicide, the person is still alive at um, OKU Hospital. Um, so it was three shootings. Now, at this stage, I must, I must sympathize with the families of those um, persons lost, especially the, um, the woman on Darling Road. We all saw the videos going, going um, flashing, flashing by. The, she was shot at point blank, and a defenseless person, a male coming to a woman. And this, I think, um, is something that we need we need to look at and actually there we are pursuing a suspect in that in that matter and we are hoping that we um, justice would be served when this person is um, is arrested for the other ones um, we are gathering evidence the um, major crime unit officers they are working round the clock trying to investigate these accidents um, this um, incident, sorry, and from Office of Commissioner and um, the Executive, we are there to give, to render any support that is needed in order that we could bring these um, investigations to an end. Now, when um, that is done, if one is arrested, we, we are hoping that the process would go on smoothly, especially from the officers, the work of the officer do not end when we arrest. We have, there's the court, court process and um, persons going to court, persons being um, convicted or, or whatever, but um, we would like to see the processes go on smoothly. Okay. We have so far, uh, along with the, the incidents, the shootings that have occurred in the last weekend, uh, there have been quite a few rumors uh, circulating. Can you bring clarification to at least one? Uh, there was a, a, an incident, well, a case where they were saying that the uh, woman who lost her life, Hermia Lord, uh, may have been cooperating with police. Um, we do not have any information to support that. Actually, um, when when um, that was being circulated, when we got that info, uh, we investigated and um, we checked the various stations. We, fe we checked um, our um, units, various units involved in um, arresting persons for drugs, um, the drug unit, yes, our intel unit, and there was uh, no way that um, she had given or even attempted to give police, um, police any information. However, whatever information that we get, we will work on it. Um, there are um, orders circulating. We are working on whatever information that is related to the public because that is what investigation is about. We do not dispel at first hand that information. We would investigate and to find out because what we are looking for is the motive and to find an individual responsible for the um, the various crimes. So, so we are working along um, those lines, and as soon as I said, I know for one of them, the with the um, lady, as probably as soon as possible, we would have someone arrested for that. And in the same vein, um, we are asking members of the public. Um, in fact, instead of um, circulating um, voice notes or messages that you could get to. Um, someone, the office of the commissioner, a close friend as um, it has been communicated, a police that you trust, um, somebody 
give them that information which would be relayed to the investigators so that we would be able to see light through our investigation. So um, I'm appealing to members of the public and also thanking those who have come forward to give um, information. I know it's still early, but uh, have you been able to determine any connection between those uh, shootings? Um, we have uh, tried to through our mappings, but um, there, from now, we have not seen any connections between, between the shootings. I am not saying there's none, but we have not seen it through the investigations. It's not pointing us to any connection. Okay. And uh, these incidents came on the heels of uh, word from the Royal St. Lucia Police Force that we, were, we had enjoyed a reduction in the past year in criminal activity overall. Uh, mm -hmm. Can you speak to uh, the plan of the Royal St. Lucia Police Force uh, uh, going forward in terms of trying to get a hold back on this crime situation? Of course, it has certainly raised the alarm of the general public. Um, what are your concerns, sentiments? Yes, um, ac actually our aim is to um, work towards reducing crime. Now, um, before giving the plans that we have, but I need to indicate that crime fighting is not the police alone. So we know that is a big responsibility that we have to fight crime where we could um, prevent and um, investigate when it happens, but crime fighting in general, to see a reduction in the crime situation, it has to be, everybody has to, has to be involved. The various agencies, the, um, the schools that these persons attend, because um, before they reach that age, they would have passed a school. They, the family where they, where they live, the area where they, um, where they live. So it is something that we need to work on holistically and um, so that we could see a total reduction in crime. However, the police, we will do our part. We, we are hoping and we are continuing to have our patrols. That's one of the things that we will be doing. Um, we also uh, doing intelligence-driven patrols. So we would be doing our general patrol and do our patrol based on intel gathered. Um, we would also do our hotspot, what we call a hotspot policing. That is where, based on the um, based on the statistics, having analyzed it, you would find areas where um, crimes are more prevalent. So you would have your resources directed in those areas. Also, um, we, we would be doing the hotspot individuals, right? So mm -hmm. we know the persons based on intelligence gathered again or past history of um, individuals, we would, we would keep a tab on those individuals, being at them, um, doing our stop and searches and so on. Our traffic checks, all these things, um, we will be getting um, into to ensure that um, we bring some form of normalcy into St. Lucia. Yeah. Okay. I now uh, invite you both for closing words as we wrap up this briefing. Dr. Seeley? I'd just like to encourage the public to maintain the social distancing, to wear a mask properly, mm -hmm. and to sanitize and encourage persons, other persons, to do so as well. In so doing, it's not only uh, we're maintaining our personal responsibility, but we're ensuring the safety of not just ourselves, but our families and members of our community as well. Thank you. Mr. Daisy? Yes, just to reassure our members of the public that the police will continue on its journey in the crime fighting efforts. We will do all we can um, to ensure that um, justice is um, done, especially to persons who have lost their loved ones. Um, sometimes we believe that some cases take long, yes, but um, we would rather it take some time. We're asking persons to be patient, let us gather the evidence that is needed to bring these cases to court. Bringing a case to court without the um, evidence to show that somebody is responsible, it makes um, no sense. So uh, we are gathering evidence. There are things that need to be done, cannot be done in St. Lucia. Um, like um, getting certain tests done, we have to rely on overseas um, technicians to, to, to do it. So um, 
sometimes it takes a long process. There are many cases I would have loved to see completed, but we are still in the process of gathering information uh, within reports from um, overseas and so on. So just to ask persons, victims, to bury with us, and um, we would see light through the tunnel someday. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Daisy. Uh, this has been another NTN update, of course, a special uh, featuring the Royal St. Lucia Police Force and the persons of Superintendent of Police, Dr. Mashama Seeley, and Commissioner of Police, Milton Daisy, providing an update there on the recent COVID-19 breaches, as well as the actions taken with respect to each of them and matters overall, safety and security and crime in recent times. Of course, on behalf of everyone here at the GIS, our sympathies goes to go out to the individuals who, uh, the families and loved ones of individuals who lost their lives in the recent uh, criminal activity. And of course, as the Commissioner of Police indicated, a call to the general public to come forward if you have any information uh, with respect to these various incidents uh, to assist with the investigation. My name is Jesse Leon signing off for now. Do stay tuned to NTN for more programming. Goodbye.